Hey everybody, uh, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Welcome to another episode of Hey Man. Hey Man. Hey Man, what's up? How you doing, dude? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. I, you, know what's, you know what's funny? Mm. We see each other so much. There's not a lot to talk about. Well, <laughs> it's not- <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we were like, what are we talking about today? I'm like, I don't know. We fucking spoke yesterday for an hour. Like, <laughs> Although, I really do my best, because you live in Vegas now. Yep. We, really, live, we live five minutes from each other. I really do my best not to reach out while we're both in Vegas. Because we're only in Vegas for like three days, and then we're on the road again. Yeah. This is a nice a week off, but... Have you noticed that? Like, I really try not to... No, it's nice, and here's the thing. We have a whole weekend to catch up and talk, and then we do this once, twice a week. So yeah. it's, you know... Seems like a lot of talking, and you know... It's, but it's crazy we never run out of things to talk about. That's true. That's true. But I will tell you one thing I've learned from traveling so much is time apart is good for relationships. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, right? So if you're making me do cryo every day, I'm going to fucking freak out. Well, not just that. Like if we saw each other seven days a week and just had to figure out something to talk about, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like eventually I'd be like this motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. But we, it's, it's a, it's a good amount. It's a good balance, which is why I try not to. I agree. I agree. And, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not only that, like. We reach out when we need to. Yeah. And I'm with your mom and you're with a mom. Yeah. It and out. so like, yeah, it's good time. Now, first of all. Couple things. Yep. Um, I am. I just want to say right off the bat, uh, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in Miami coming Miami. up this week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Miami. <laughs> Come on. Uh, that's June second and third. Correct. I don't know if this will be. This should be up by right up right around then. I hope so. Um, and then we have a couple weeks off. Yep. And then we're in Columbus. C bus and then I guys, like the same C bus club as we were last. Same C bus club. No we're, snow this time though. In July we're doing Tampa. Uh, we got a bunch of different places to go. In July we're going to New Jersey, Orlando, and all. Orlando. Yes. Uh, Comedian Josh Wolf talk for tour dates. Uh, the UK in the fall. Um, October starts October twenty fifth is the UK, and then at the beginning of November we take some spots around Europe. Yeah. Can't wait. And, and a Halloween. We just Googled if Amsterdam celebrates Halloween. The answer is yes, but on a different day. It's but, their own version. It's November 11th. It's not the 31st of October. But so here's the thing. I, I, I'm, I'm coming dressed up. Let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm, I'm going John Travolta Pulp Fiction. I'm coming do, dressed up. Do you remember what the Amsterdam Halloween is called? It was okay. like, it was like, Hold on, you guess and I'm going to guess. I, okay. Ready? I think it was, um, neat Hooland. N I T neat. Oh, 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 you're you're like the actual name. Oh, I was yeah. I, well, I, th- I was going that like it was with the saint they celebrated. It was like Saint uh, uh, Meritor or something like that. Oh, it's called Saint Martin. S I N T. I don't know if that's the accent. Everybody, it's M- not. A- I'm just go ahead and take a guess. It's not T E N. Okay, I you was know, way closer than you were. Can I ask? I you- said Saint Meritor, and you said Neatenhulen. <laughs> 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 What? Well, I got knew questions it was for you. I got questions for you before you go do an explanation. Hold the phone. Okay. First of all, what the fuck? Second of all, wow. Second of all, how did I come up with Neatenhulen? Uh, yeah, you weren't even like. Okay. It wasn't even. I'll tell you, you had a I, couple letters right. But that's. I remembered the I and the T at the middle and the end of the first. So oh, Neatenhulen was two words. Oh, neat. <laughs> Hulen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> I thought that was one word. Oh, Neat and Hulen? Oh, no, 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 it's, it was. That was. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I have no more questions. But, okay. but can you tell us about how I came to Neat and Hulen? I would really like to know, actually. I remember the I and the T. And I didn't. In the first word. Yeah. <laughs> first word. First, I didn't remember yeah. it being a saint. Uh, right, but neat. I remember there was an N in there somewhere. Right, and I did. I remembered a double letter in the next, but I didn't remember Martin. Yeah, you got Holland. <laughs> Holland. I thought it was. Du- not, it sounds more Swedish than uh, Dutch. How? What to give me a Dutch accent? How do you know what <laughs> Dutch sounds like? Nice. If it's like, like you're right though. Dutch may sound Swedish. So actually, you know what? I'll probably give you that one. Okay. But God, damn let's it, do this fun. also. You ready? Let's do this also, and we'll Woo! and we'll check backwards. We let's both try to do a Dutch accent, okay, and, like- the, and then 
We'll check later to see who did a better job. How are we going to check? Well, I mean, I'm sure you can Google Dutch accent. Right? Okay. Okay. So let's... Um, yeah, I want you to say in your best Dutch accent, this pancake is pretty dry. <laughs> when you come up with these sentences, I'm just before we get into this, whenever we do these these uh, accent challenges, because yeah. they're not really challenge, he always picks the craziest sentences. Like you can't just like give me something regular. This pancake what? is dry. What's what's re just what's regular? Know, like, that's a pretty regular sentence. Are you hungry? I am. Okay, because that's where pancake come from. This pancake from. is pretty dry, is what you should say. Hmm. In Dutch accent. Do you know what a Dutch accent sounds like at all? No? Okay. We're asking it. We're asking it. Deutsch, this pancake is a very dry. That sounded very American. That it's first it sounded German. Yeah, because I, I was I was thinking in my head that my Dutch accent is going to sound very German. Here's why I mean, I've had people tell me that accents are offensive. Are they offensive if you do them terribly? If you do it terribly in a mocking sort of way, like if you have like malicious intent, yeah, behind it, okay. yes, but okay. like ready, you ready. and I are just terrible at accents. I would like to display that talent. To so the world. do me. I'm going to give you another chance for this pancake no, no, is good, pretty dry. That's you said sprechen Sie Deutsche. Deutsch. Deutsch. This pancake is dry. That's what yeah, you said? indeed. Okay. I'm sticking with it, because the second one's going to be worse. So. Okay. All right. Ready? Wait, I got to give you a different sentence. Oh, oh, I don't get to say this pancake no, you, is no, dry? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm trying to think. I don't think I can come I up. mean, I think the best way to do a comparison is if we're both yeah, saying yeah, the same thing. Okay. Okay. But I'm not going to say sprechen Sie Deutsch. Yeah, that's okay. I just added my little, little flair in there. Yeah, because that... Okay. Yeah, don't worry about okay, it. Okay, ready? This pancake is pretty dry. That was American. Here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. I can't hear the accent in my head. I nope. don't know what it sounds like. Nope. Right. Okay. That's why my new mind was going to sound more German because it's just okay. ready. The only yep. Okay. This pancake is pretty dry. <laughs> you sound you sound like an Italian pizza man. <laughs> no, that would be a this a pancake is pretty dry. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like Dracula. <laughs> Yeah, it sounded like Mario. It actually wasn't that bad. Hey, it's a me, a Mario. No, you can't do too much of that, I don't think. Okay, why not? Isn't it the same thing as like singing? Is it a copyright? No, no, no. Oh, no, okay, no. okay. Um, so listen, guys, you guys can uh, can give your opinion on who did the best one, but I, I think, think neither. I think honestly, I think there was one word in there that I did better than you. Dry. I'm not sure which word it is, but I think I mixed it up enough where I. <laughs> It definitely, mine was definitely not a consistent accent. Neither of them were, and neither of them were good. Okay. So, you know. Well, listen, dude. Um, psyched to be here with you. Mm -hmm. uh, psyched to be, uh, I remember everybody, every Monday night, I have my residency here in Vegas. Uh, 9.30 p.m. on every Monday. It's a good time. Make sure you, if you're in Vegas to come on out. Uh, the Celtics. Oh, last night. Now, listen, I was texting oh. you, too. Yeah. About that game. We're talking about game six for those of you, if you're listening to this after. Game six of the Eastern Conference Finals were last night. The Celtics went down 3 nothing in the first three games. And I was like, well, the Celtics and the Lakers are about to get swept. And that's, I mean, a great bummer. But I guess, the you know, I texted you. I was like, well, I guess we're going to be competing for Title 18 in Cancun. Because both of, both of us are gone. Now, the Lakers did get swept. The Celtics did not. The Celtics have now come back and won three straight games that makes crazy. and have now forced a game seven in Boston. As a Boston sports fan, it's everything you ever dreamed of. Someone who feels a little spoiled, especially in your lifetime span. It dawned on me in your lifetime span before Brady left the Patriots. You had only known the Patriots as a team that won Super Bowls. Or at least won the division. Yeah. And like, now we're not even the best team in the division. But it's so crazy because pre you, that team was basically mostly doo doo stew. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, However, it's, it's not the first uh, Boston team to come back down from a three uh, three nothing uh, deficit. No. And I'll tell you something else. This is another point I was going to make. As Boston sports fans, I feel like we're a little spoiled, not only in how much winning we've done lately, mm -hmm. but like in moments, like. We've had a lot of good moments no, through like so sport, hard. like that tip in last night, that that moment in Derek White, dude. Oh, that was, are you letting the, as God, as Ben so Adebayo good. and everybody on the Heat? 
When you see that shot go up, how are you letting Derek White, the smallest dude on the floor, well, other than Kyle Lowry, as yeah. the one that crashes the boards? Max Struess, who was his man, was double teaming Tatum to make denying him the ball, right? So when he threw it into Smart, he just peeled off, and Struess was already trailing him, so he had no no shot at it. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. But I'll tell you, I was last night. I was in Vegas, and I was um at Heather McDonald's. She was doing a yeah. live taping of her podcast, Juicy Scoop. And I've known Heather oh, forever. Oh, podcast yeah. show? Got it. I've, done, Got I've known it. Heather pre-Chelsea lately. Right. I've known her a long time. And Chris Frangiola was there performing. Oh, nice. Yo, dude. I forgot how fucking funny Chris is. Chris is a ridiculously funny oh, dude. Oh, my God. Guys, if you are listening and he's coming to your, to your town, that dude is straight up funny. Chris Frangiola, man. But this is a week, big weekend for me, and then we'll get into some of the stuff you want to talk about for supporting friends in comedy. You know, um, Burt Kreischer's movie came out, yep. The Machine. And I didn't even know he had a movie coming out. Dude, his And then ma- I saw the preview, and I was like, wait, wait, wait. Remember I texted you? I was like, yeah. hey, did you know yeah. Burt's got a movie? His Machine story. Is that real? Yeah, his Machine story is his... Ver- you know my, the Bachelor Party story for me? Yeah. His Machine story is that for him, times... Like, he probably has... It's like fucking Mission Impossible. He's like Tom Cruise. Yeah, his machine story probably has four or five times as many views on YouTube anyways. On Facebook, I think my story has like something like 40 million views. Really? Crazy like that. But it's inspirational for so many reasons. Bert's inspirational for so many reasons. One, look, it, we're not talking about a dude who's uh, more talented than everybody else. He's not like he's the most handsome comic ever. He's got a great laugh. He's not the smartest guy, but he's a straight up good dude. He's a fucking hustler. Mm -hmm. And he, what people uh, attach to about him is his humanness. And the fact that he is, he looks like a good guy having, having a ton of fun. And 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 everybody is, and everybody's like, Everybody has a friend who's like, oh, I know that dude. I know that version right. of that dude. And so super cool, very inspirational to see him take this from where I know it was and have, and, and for sure, he pushed this across the finish line. Right. hundred percent. He did so, it by like, himself. Not by himself. Not but by he, himself. But he, it, it, and to see him do it and uh, to know, you know, what it takes to get something like that done. Right. Because right now, dude, we have, you know, two movies. I have two movies that are out of the, out of my book. That have been bought by production companies to be made. Mm-hmm. And so not only am I rooting for Bert just because he's a good guy, but I'm rooting for him because, look, man, the success breeds success for all of us. And if they're like, hey, we can take comic stories and turn them into movies that make money, then that's going to be for, good for everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so I'm really pulling for him. I'm a, I usually wait for things to come you know, home. You're going to go see that in theaters. I'm for sure going to buy more than one ticket. I understand that. I'm going to buy a bunch of tickets and I'll go and then I'll give them away to people if they want to stand to come in. But, but I'm going to buy a bunch of tickets to that because I want, I want him, um, I want this to be successful around for, for all of us, but Absolutely. for him, especially he's a, like I said, he's a good, good dude. And so I, I want, I'm wishing the best for him. And I know Seb- Sebastian has a movie out this weekend with mm-hmm. Robert De Niro um, and so like good stuff. I'll, I'll, I'm only going to buy one ticket to that one, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but wait to let him know, but, but no, no, this is not a direct, this is not a right. knock on, on Sebastian at all. Sebastian's one of the funniest comics out there, but it's so interesting, dude, to have all these people that I started with or that I'm friendly with, or that I'm friends with and have them be in the one percent, like Sebastian and Bert are both in the one percent of people who have ever done my job, success wise. True. It's crazy. It's it's so crazy. It's a crazy time to be to be doing what I'm doing, and to be around all these super talented, ambitious people is is inspirational. Right. I I, I understand that because it's you're watching your peers flourish, which is yeah. promising, but also nice to see people who you know and have been who have known for a long time you know get success that is deserved yeah man yeah 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 and i i'm a person who truly roots for other people right you know and um and so super psyched about that um yeah 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 super psyched about that yeah um what do you want to talk about this week um well i also noticed because we hadn't done a podcast in vegas in a couple weeks i didn't do the shoe 
You want to hold up your thing shoe? that I would like to do for the start of this. Um, the shoe so tell I, everybody because maybe they maybe they didn't hear that. So um, I would like to just you know help bring him into sneaker culture a little more and uh, just like be a little more hip. And I have done that for him. Whoa, 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 hey, currently whoa, whoa. he's wearing not tied uh, like he didn't tie a knot or tie shoes. They're just semi loose unlaced white Air Force Ones. Very important. So which part's important? The unlaced part, like you're not tying well, up. How come you're telling me that you're trying to hit me up? Are you saying that this Budweiser shirt isn't kind of hip? Do you want to give everybody an outfit check real quick? Ooh. You're you're in a lot of bright blue today. Uh, dude, this is... It's a good fit, but yeah. you know, but you're you're going definitely on the younger side, which I like. Yeah. This, right. The Budweiser See? shirt is young? The, the wearing a beer t-shirt button down that someone would wear to a tailgate or a beach party is definitely something... Not somebody your age would wear. Or something that somebody in the 70s would wear 100%. Like, I think you say yeah, but it could no, be 17 no. or 60 should be wearing this. And I'm closer to 60 than I am 17. Yeah, well, that's a bummer for you. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. You're old. Um, no, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, so anyway, so I've gotten him into more of the... I, I have gotten you into sneaker culture. For sure, for sure. Um, and so the shoe I brought today, because it's the Celtics, uh, the Celtics won a game, and we're going to game seven. Um, this is the Pine Green Jordan 1 Low. Um, How come that looks so tall to be a low? It's a, uh, the, the tongue. So the tongue is about, a, it's like the tongue of like what's in the mid, yeah. right? But they pretty much just cut off this part right here. Mm -hmm. So still just a low. Um, but I got this shoe... Do you remember when I got this shoe? I was living at Curson at that house. Did you win that one? No, I didn't win it. This was back when Jordan won lows in the sneaker game wasn't like crazy, right? Are they crazy right now? Yeah. Well, so these Jordan won lows, like in certain colorways, you can't find like on Foot Locker, you can't find any Jordan ones really on any online store. When the pandemic hit, I got sad because also I got dumped. So I bought a pair of shoes to make myself feel better. I remember that. And I bought these shoes. And so I sat on these shoes for a while, and then, you know, I, I wore them a bunch because, you know, wear your shoes, all right? Wear your shoes. They're meant to be worn. Unless you're a reseller or whatever, you're really sitting on them, and it's like your, your version of stocks, sure. But wear your shoes because I wear all of mine. Um, these shoes over quarantine skyrocketed. So I bought them for $99 on Foot Locker. You bought those for $99? Mm -hmm. How much do they go for now? 400 Get out of here! <laughs> How I would sell I that right I, now. I can't now. It's super worn. And so they'd probably only be a hundred fifty dollar shoe. Yeah. And also, again, I, I look, if I have a shoe that's worth a ridiculous amount of money that I uh, hold on for a while and it's just too much money for me to wear on my feet, yeah. I'll I'll sell it. Don't get me wrong. Like cash is king. So if I if I end up coming across a shoe that later on is worth way more even worn, oh I'll sell it. But I've had a couple shoes that I bought when they were cheap. And that have gone up and almost doubled in price, if not more. Yeah. But I've worn them all. So they're worth what I bought them for and not what they're actually worth. Yeah. You might like, if you're done wearing them, will you just sell them? No, I'll probably give them away. Oh, all right. But again, it depends on the shoe though. Like if I can get uh, like a nice buck out of them because they're a nice shoe, I just don't wear them anymore. I'll clean them up and like make them look nice and but they'll still be used. It's nice. Right. But, uh, and then I'll sell them and I'll probably sell them to like a friend, but. I won't ever like, I'm not in for the resale game, so I won't ever sell my shoes to like a reseller or anybody like that. I'll either give them away or sell them to a friend, depending on the shoe or no. donate. By the way, speaking of shoes, okay, and feet. Whoa, pause. It dawned on me that an idea that we had a while ago went away without you fulfilling, I think, what you promised. I didn't lose or promise anything. I think. Okay, for those of you who are new to the podcast, I had come up with an idea for Jacob to make money to do an OnlyFans for his feet. Yep. But, and, tell, but tell him, it's not just that. Why don't you tell him the details about it? Well, I, I think it should be less sexual and more funny. And so I thought we would dress his feet up, his toes up, as athletes, actors, actors. Just, just people. Yeah, you know. So, like, if we did one of his feet and it was just athletes, it would be, like, Toe Burrow. Toe Dell Beckham Jr. Toe Dell Beckham Jr. Peel Toe Heel. Yeah, so good. Like, all these good ones, right? Why don't you do it first? Because, dude, and then your other foot. So, he's got three, like, mangled toes. I almost lost three toes when I was... That's what I think. Every time you take your sock off, it should make that Halloween laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they are kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. 
they're, one they're, of them has like a brain at the top of it. Yeah, because like how it healed, it was like on top of my other toe. Yeah, and dude. so it kind of like morphed this like you you know it's like if you look at it like it goes in and it fits in like a puzzle piece. It's, it's like really strange. In the brain when you take your sock off, you all of them are the brain. Yeah, exactly. Brain in the brain. Well, one of them is a Slenderman toe because he doesn't have a toenail anymore. It's just a clean face. Uh, and then one of them is just jacked up. So here's what I'm saying. We would do one foot, we would do, you could have two separate pages. One OnlyFans for like the Todell Beckham Jr. You're just going to paint my toes. I, I'll i pay Iman. She does not like feet. She will not come near my toes. I will. She she barely likes her own feet. That's why she wears socks to sleep. I will decorate. We'll get somebody to decorate. I'll pay someone to decorate your toes. I don't know if I want a random person painting my toes. Yeah, that won't be random because we'll pay them. That's random still. <laughs> I don't know if you know what the definition of random is. It's not random because I'm not picking them randomly. You're I'm, picking them randomly based on, based on the price that you're paying. I'm paying them, so that's not random. That's yeah, a random person that you're paying. Do you know this person? Not because you're paying them. Relax over there. <laughs> I know exactly. We're going to go in circles. I, I, nope, still a random person. I, I bet you we get Joy to do it. Who? Joy. Oh, Joy? Yeah. Still okay. random to me. So here's the deal. But Sorry, Joy. Here's my point. <sighs> One foot is like the... What if we did superheroes Athletes. and supervillains? I love it. And the and oh, the perfect. And the messed but, up toes are the supervillains. Yeah, or the messed up toes could be like oh, like you could be like, one like Freddy be like, and Jason yeah, or like, like horror, like, like and the Saw, other ones are guy like, from Saw. And the other ones are just like kids like who are like trapped at Crystal Lake. I ooh. Yeah, you know, like that's Jason. That's that's well, listen, Jason Voorhees. That's I think a stuff. This is a great idea. So you do I, it. No, because I don't have the other foot. Their foot. Well, is it a bird now? Holy shit. You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wasn't like that was scarecrow. <laughs> that was not a Halloween noises that I wanted it to be. No, that was no, that's not it. That's a cuckoo clock now. You're going backwards. You stuck with this, you stuck with the scarecrow. I don't know what you know what's crazy is sometimes I try to make like I don't do voices well and I don't do a, I don't do like sound effects well. No. Nope. So like I try to do something and another noise comes out. Like I tried to make that Halloween and it came out cuckoo coo. I thought you were, nope, that's right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say cuckoo could chew at one point. Okay. But I am serious about this. Everybody help me out that's listening. Or, or watching. Not only, because I know everyone's going to say it's a good idea. How much are you willing to pay a month for me to pay somebody to, like, you know how they, they you know how, like, some people, they taxidermy dead mice and they dress them up? Right. Yeah. Like, they're going to taxidermy my toes because they're still here. But they we wouldn't taxidermy them, but we dress them up. L political figures, we could put a top hat on. Toe Biden? Toe Biden is hilarious, too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Try to think of one for... I think we'd have to think of one with for Ab Abraham Lincoln so we could put a, like a big top hat on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Beard. I'm trying to think of like a George Washington one, too. I'm trying to think of like my Mount Rushmore. I mean, the Mount Rushmore? Or your Mount Rushmore? No, no, the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. How, how do you how do, how do you do Theodore Roosevelt? Because the letters are there. Toador, I think, is easy. Yeah, but then he just sounds like a mythical creature from where Toad, the wild things Toador are. Toador Roosevelt or Theodore Toosevelt? Dude, oh. that's the one. <laughs> Theodore Toosevelt. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, come on, man. So, like, I think it's easy, but I need to know. We need to talk him. What is the what is the monthly? Like, how much would you need to see? If, Five grand. A month? Yep. You know that since you've been making a little money on the road, that money, that price has gone up. Oh, yeah. You know <laughs> Oh, yeah. Double it or used, nothing. It used to be two grand. Double or nothing. And now you're a five. You need five grand a month? Yep. Do I, I just, here's what I think. Two grand also would be dope. I'm not mad at that, if I got to be honest. So two grand a month. Let's go it, three. Meet, meet somewhere in the middle. How much do you think people pay a month? Like, what, what's an OnlyFans subscription? It can be free. But also, but why could, would you do a free OnlyFans? Uh, why do people do that? People do like a free to gain traction, so like anybody can subscribe, right? But then people on OnlyFans make like uh, they can do like customs, right? Or they send things to people that are locked, and you can unlock it for a price, right? So then they make their money mostly based on customs or tips. I wonder. And also, with the free subscription, like you, and you I wanted it to like a different, like a, a different market because everybody can come see it. I want to say this honestly. Okay, um, this is an honest question. Cheapest one is five dollars, though. Nobody get mad. This is an honest question. Will we, if we do Shaquille Toheel? Oh God, I'm scared of where this is going to go. It, I, I, obviously, blackface is wrong, but black toe. 
wrong. Really? I think so. Black toe? What? Uh, I mean, uh, okay. I, I can't say if black toe is racist or not because I just feel like it's not. I feel like we could just like we. Could, I could have Amon like just black, do black, black toe. Do, we just do makeup. Impar impar impartial black toe racist. I think so. I think so. I don't think black toe is racist. It's we're clearly it's going for the joke. Yeah, right. But so are the people who did blackface. No, and blackface. The history of blackface is really what we're talking about, which is what's what's how it's based in racism, the history of it. Right. So, and I'm totally behind that. Right. Black toe is clearly. We have to get uh, a, a secondary opinion because you can't get an opinion from two white guys about that. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, we can have an opinion. That's not true, but right, 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 right. But like, yeah. uh, 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 what I would think is a proper opinion, not from two white dudes. We could do comedians. Tokoy, <laughs> Tokoy, <laughs> Tokoy is hilarious. He looks, his his skin's already kind of pale, so it'll be fine. Dave Chappelle. Mm. I mean, it's not all going to be perfect. You know, you don't like Dave Chappelle. Tony Rock. Tony Rock is perfect. perfect. His it's literally in yeah. the name. Tony Soprano. Who else? I, I mean, this is gonna be this is what I'm saying. So how much how much would it cost? How much monthly are we talking about? I'll, I'll stick between I'll stick at three. Three dollars? No. Well, oh no, I'd probably go. So here's the thing. You probably have to I'd probably do five dollars because I think that's the minimum you can do on OnlyFans for okay. a subscription. So and, in order to make three grand. That's six hundred people. I feel like that's doable. Dude. <laughs> Which is unfortunate, by the way. Here's the deal. I feel like, as I know, because 600 of you people will definitely be on that page. But, but I will tell you, 500 of those people are not there to jerk off to your feet. They're there to laugh. I promise you, the majority of the people that would sign up, especially from here. Now, listen, There's I get messages every, almost every day about people asking to see my feed. They're, the feet, let me tell you, the feet fetish, you, hey, you foot oh, fetish people, you're persistent. I will give uh, you that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you get it too? Yeah, but I, you're not, not going to lie. I get, I get like, uh, I, got, <laughs> I got one message and this, this, uh, this person, I don't know if it was a guy or girl. And they're like, Hey, so my friend is really sick. She has a request from you. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And she was like, she's on her deathbed and her final dying wish is a picture of your butt. And I was like, Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the fake. Like, they were like, "Really, a dying person's wish?" And I was like, <laughs> yeah, my, "You know, I was like, guess did, what? I'm saying no to a dying person, dying person's wish." Did you? I'm, tell like, her, I'm gonna need a no from the doctor. Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm say, need, I'm gonna, I was like, I was like, prove it. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah. "What?" They're like, "I'm not with her right now. She's in the hospital." I was like, "Go to the hospital." They're like, "Why? She's dying." And I go, "Go visit your dying friend. Are you a bad friend? You're not gonna <laughs> so, so say bye to your dying friend. Like, go see your friend and put the put her on the phone." Yeah. And then they stopped responding. Dude, you know, one time I was in Denver. So weird. And we just booked Denver, I think. Ooh. I don't think I know. We just booked Denver. When? Uh, October, I think. May. Right before UK? Yeah, maybe September. Either way, we're in. I love Denver. Yeah, okay. So, Denver's awesome. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I was in Denver once. And there was somebody in the front row texting. And I go, hey. I go, you got to put your phone away. I go, you can, this is 2020. It was last year, probably. I go, it's 20 or 2021. I go, whatever it was. Like, I know it's 2021 or 2020. And so if you feel like you need to be texting, that's fine. But you're going to have to step out of the showroom and do it, especially front row. It's super disrespectful. And distracting. And you know, I'm, I'm very direct with that. I'm not an yeah. asshole, but I'm very direct. And she said to me, I have a friend who's in the hospital, a really good friend. And I was like, obviously not that good of a friend because you're at the show. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah, so, so roasted. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, you're really like, concerned about your dying friend. And you also might take out, step outside to take a phone call. Yeah. Like, passed on tonight's show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how? Like, but also to to her, she was probably like, well, she's dying, but she's not like, or she she's like really sick, but obviously not sick enough for me to go see this show. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. it's so ridiculous. She tried to make herself look like a good person, and then just made herself not. I just want to get back to this. So three thousand dollars. So six hundred people. I need six hundred people. Now you need six hundred people. The only way to find out, we got to do it for a couple months to build it up. Yeah, I, I want to know. I want to know. And look, man, I understand. Probably unconventional for a father to try to talk his son into doing an OnlyFans for his feet. Yeah, 
Yeah. I get that that does not seem we're not, straight down the middle. Yeah, we're not really a conventional father-son. We're not really a conventional family. Totally get that. No, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> so, but like, so I get some people will probably be like, I can't believe you're trying to, uh, it's, it's, it's $3,000 a month. It's also not like you're pimping me out. And it's funny. It's funny. Okay. Right. Okay. What is your hang up? Why are you? I don't want to have to spend the time of sitting there having somebody paint my feet to look like characters, take photos of them, and then go wash off said paint. Yeah, that. I mean, granted, it's like it. the worst reason I've I also ever. I like touching my feet. Okay, all right. Because also, my toes have like nerve damage, and they feel weird. And yeah, pinky in the brain. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're like. Sometimes I'll wake up and they're purple, and then I'll. Get out of bed 10 minutes later and they're not purple. Yeah, we got to make sure you get a couple pictures of the purple toes. They're going to like that. Nope. Yeah, we'll do a couple. We'll have one. We'll dress one of your toes up as Barney one morning. Or we could do like, uh, we could do like aliens. We could do like, uh, what's a purple alien? Help me out. Uh, a purple alien? I don't know. A purple extraterrestrial. Like, the like, only thing purple I can like think one, one Purple makes me think of Barney and Prince <sighs> and eggplants. Anything else? Uh, LSU, go Tigers, because it's purple and gold. It definitely does not. Ever, That's what makes me think of. Not me. Uh, it's so, so let's do this. Oh, okay. Grimace. Oh, yeah. Go, yo, good call. Grimace was, that's pre you, Grimace. You know, Grimace, they're, they're doing a, a birthday. It's a Grimace birthday meal at McDonald's soon, and they're doing like a purple shake. Yeah, I'm on board for that. Yeah. But you won't, you haven't been to McDonald's in like 25 years. I know the exact last time I had McDonald's. Go. It was your fifth birthday. Birthday the one with the SpongeBob, yes, at Bellingham. The one with the SpongeBob and the one where Jack fell out of the treehouse. Yep. Okay. And we, I just want to make sure I have my days. Right. Yep. <laughs> that was it. Yep. And Brett bought Brett Anthony the cake flipper. Mm -hmm. He brought that SpongeBob back Pin from Mexico. Oh, the pinata. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Um, and so uh, I remember that we went. That was the year also that we got your. Birthday cake from Ralph's, which is a grocery store in Los Angeles, and they put a question mark instead of an exclamation point, so it said "Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jacob." That's so funny, hilarious. I was like, "Why is there an exclamation? Is there a question mark?" And they were like, "Well, what do you mean?" I go, "They said we couldn't." The, she even said to me, "I couldn't tell if it was a question mark or an exclamation point." And I was like, "Why would you think it was a question mark for a Happy Birthday sign?" Or happy birthday writing. Whoever puts a question mark at the end of happy birthday. I was like, so you, instead of calling, yeah, and also you went with question mark? Yeah. I will tell you, so in my mindset, I was actually happy. It's funny. It's funnier. Way funnier. Funnier. The question mark's funnier. Well, okay, wait. So, you know, for my birthday this past year, we went to our, my girlfriend uh, and I and my best friend McKay, we went to Joshua Tree. Yeah. Right? And uh, you, mom, was like, hey, I got you a cake. Yeah. It's at the Stater Bros in Joshua Tree. Just pick it up when we get there. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So we get to Stater Bros. We're picking up some other supplies, and we get over to the bakery. And the, I was like, hey, I'm here to pick up a cake. She goes, yeah. And I go, she goes, is it the giant birthday cake? And I was like, oh, Jesus. I go, how big of a birthday cake did she order? And she goes, let me get it. And she goes into the back and comes out. And like you knew there was just she knew there was just three of us going. That birthday cake served a family of 30. Like it was dude. It was fucking massive. It had to be 40 pounds. Like it was like, freshman. But you know what was great? She was like, Yeah, that we had to get the biggest cake we had because the note she wanted us to write. <laughs> it fit on the first two cakes we tried it on. And I was like, what? I don't think she write the fucking Declaration of Independence. Well, if you see text, if you see text, your mom sends cards and all that. Like she's a very emotional person, and we love that about her. Yeah. It's one of our favorite things. Yes. But good God, on I love you, happy birthday is more than enough. And on this, and on the, the cake had to be. Two and a half by two and a half feet. Like it was fucking gigantic. And the note said, Hey, buddy, you're never too old to get a cake from your mom and your dad uh, or, or get a cake from your birthday. Love mom and dad. And I was like, She fucking wrote a novel on this cake. Hilarious. So she was like, All right, can you take it from me? It's heavy. And I was like, Yeah, sure. God, she was, that woman was pissed. Oh, wow. She had to write that icing on that cake. But she was like, Yeah. We had to use the biggest cake because it didn't fit on Hilarious. the first two we tried it on. Hilarious. Good the Lord. only birthday cake we had to keep scrolling to, to read the whole message. I will say this about your mom, though. It was Her amazing. attention to detail yeah. in your birthday presents and your parties and your holiday presents yeah. 
in graduations is exquisite. Oh, it's, it's all unmatched. It's unrivaled, one hundred percent. Like, and and what I and what I'm saying about the cake is not a bad thing. It just made me laugh. If you that. Yeah, it just it happened to be she was like third cake's a charm and I was yeah. like god damn it <laughs> came up with a declaration of independence and I fucking loved it. I want to tell you something if you get a if you get a card or you get a gift from my wife it's going to be well thought out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now is she going to do some research? For us? Excuse me. They're from either of us? No. No, no, no. Most of the time we just sign our name. I'll write something like uh, You'll write something dumb. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 but you do it on purpose. Like it's, yeah. it's meaningful, but also it's like, I, I remember one time you just signed a card. You were like, you said, you said, Jacob had to sign the card. So my name was here, dad. And I was like, yep, that sounds, that sounds about right. Like that, that makes sense to me. Yeah. And like, because also mom had written on every other part of the card. So dad had this little sliver at the bottom. He was like, so he was like, just had to make sure my name was here. Love you. And that's honestly. That's yeah, that's fine. That's but, good for me. So I'm good with that. Not much happened between birthday ten and eleven where I had anything extra to add. No, we saw each other every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It. yeah, yeah. It's that's the thing about like when you got to do posts on people's birthdays or Mother's Day or Father's Day. You know, after that fourth one, you're like, I got nothing. Yeah, I've really oh, you can't like the, they just get simpler and simpler every. You shot your load after the first couple ones. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pause. You shot your ver your verbal load. Library. You could just say library. You can shut your. Why? Why you gotta say you shut your library? Why you, that's you not wh the, that's why, not, why are you saying verbal load? Why you gotta use the word? Well, load? well, shot your load, man. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. You keep saying it. Why do you have to say? Uh, because you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. When you say, if I if I say after those first two ones, you shot your load, so you don't <laughs> have anything left. <laughs> You know, <laughs> am I getting the saying wrong? Well? Yes. No, for I'm not. Second, so for like the second podcast in a row. This is not the wrong saying. The other one you said, did you full throat it? Which is that was wrong. wrong. It turns out I was wrong. You said after you shot your whole load, you got you got nothing left. Yeah, but that's a it's a it's an analogy. Analogy? No, it, is it? Because it sounds pretty direct. metaphor. It's a metaphor. It sounds pretty direct. It's a metaphor. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I didn't like it, uh, dude. But I'm using that. Okay, so when you use a saying to describe something, yeah, that makes total sense. You could use a different one, though, instead of shoot your load. What is it? I don't even remember what we're talking about. You were talking about, like, after you've done so many posts for, like, Father's Day and birthdays, right. like... What would you... So how else would you say? You just would you say, run out of things to say. Yeah, you shot your load. You <laughs> ran out of stuff. <laughs> you got no more stuff left. <laughs> we gotta move on. <laughs> We gotta fucking move on. Um, that's never gonna go anywhere. Okay, listen. Well, listen, because I was right. Uh, that's gonna be a clip, and I'm gonna be right. Someone's gonna say the actual analogy or saying or whatever it is, and you're gonna be like, "That makes more sense." No, dude, it, it makes total sense. Nope. I think it's a metaphor. You're you're thinking that I'm <laughs> you're thinking you're thinking you're thinking that I'm messing up a saying, and I'm using "shot your load," which is gross. A hundred percent. I a hundred percent think you're using but something in, in this in, wrong area. In this example, in this time. What I'm saying is shot your load is exactly what you said. I got rid of every you you get rid of everything and you got nothing left. You shot your load. Yeah, like you've you've utilized your library of things to say. You got nothing left in the tank. You shot your load. You're just I know you're just playing, you're running in circles with me on purpose. No, 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 no. Because you know I'm trying you're smiling, so I know who you are. Because that camera's on you. I'm not. Because you like to make you like to make me angry. And it's not making me angry. I just don't want you to go out saying shoot your load in public. Except I, I wouldn't know in public. Not I know this, this is public. Here's There's something thing. else in the room. You don't think I know what I'm saying, but no, I'm I telling know, you I, I know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying, but I know you're using the wrong saying. I don't think shoot your load is a saying. Can we ask the third person in the room? Am I using this correctly in the... Right, it's a metaphor? It's Is that what it is? Um, it's definitely not a simile. It's a sim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll just move on. Okay. That, that, that I'm, was, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. It's a it's a metaphor. Or it's not a simile. It's, it's an analogy. Analogy. I, that's right. It's an analogy. Thank you. Okay. That's a good one. Listen. That's my that's my fight though, is it's not a good one. You could have used a better one. It's actually perfect, but you okay, doesn't nope. matter. So let's let's talk about this for a second. I want to talk about something that you're gonna hate. Ugh. Okay. Why? Because sometimes I, I have to be your dad, and I'm going to do it. In a on a podcast, though? All right, listen, dude. 
Yeah, because part of what we're promising people on this podcast, that was a lot of peas. Part of what we're <laughs> promising people on this podcast part is of the persistence po- and perfection of and professionalism in the which, podcast which, space. Which, by the way, there's no professionalism. On my end, there's so much. Disagree. Yeah, dude, I shoot my load every time I'm yeah, in I, didn't say that. I was literally just going to say why, because you shot your load. Okay, fuck okay. it. So listen. Very professional. Let's talk about your health. Jesus. Let's full talk- dad. Oh, what? I said full dad. You're talking about my health? Let's talk about it for a second. Let's talk about... Let's talk about a couple of things. Let's talk about th- the combo of the diet and... The exercise regimen. Okay. All right. I'm a, I just am worried. And you know I'm a little extra when it comes to that stuff. Yep. You make me stand in a cryo chamber that is negative 160 degrees for three minutes. Just so you can tell me that it's good for your, your mental toughness because it's you doing things that your brain's telling you you don't want to do. But that, that Which, is- by the way, makes sense. I still hate it. Yeah, dude, I don't like it either. I started only picking songs specifically to make you angry when we're in there. Yeah, dude, I don't like it either, though, but that's the point. Got RuPaul coming up. Okay, next. so my, here's my thing, man. You know, for me, it's all about, you don't have to be Grandpa Tom or me or, right? I'm a little extra when it comes to, and, and I, you know, I have a personality that doesn't really allow me to do something just a little bit. Yeah. I, I need to push all the chips in, right? Yep. And so I get it. And it, I, and I don't need to work out twice a day, but if you count the hike in the morning, I'm probably doing twice You're a day. You're doing cardio and then weights. Yep. Definitely. Okay. And okay. So, and I'm very strict with my diet and all that stuff, but mm-hmm. for me, I like it because it's, um, it makes, I, I'm now at a point where I just like to do things that make me feel good. Right. Okay. I just am worried that you... Oh, you get caught in being 26 where in a 26 year old dude's body is, is very resilient and basically feels good no matter what. Most of the time. Most of the time. But it's all about habits and it's all about muscle memory with your own body. And it's all about, um, you know, uh, uh, getting yourself on a regimen and all that stuff, all that structure and all that stuff is, I think, not just mentally and phys- mentally, but physically and emotionally good for you. Right. What, what was it? Because, you know, between me and your mom, like, uh, and when I say diet, some people get triggered by the word diet. They're like, you shouldn't use the word diet. But that's the way you eat is your diet. Right. I'm not saying go on a diet. When I say diet, I mean like the way you eat. Right. Wow. Why do you think you don't consistently do either? And I've said this to you a bunch of times. You don't have to do everything, but just do one out of the, right? Why? What do you think? Because I know you know. I know you know, oh, this isn't good for me, right? Yep. So why do you think? Why? Tell me why. You're not doing any of it. Well, we work out on the weekends when we're out of town. Okay. So Okay, let me ask you a question. Why don't I do it on my own? Why don't you do it on your own? And do you think the workouts you do in those gyms are like, like, well, well, you're going a hundred, you're going a hundred in those workouts and you're only going for a half hour or so. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so for me, it's all about pushing yourself, dude. I have a yeah, left one. Left? Yep. Um, For me, it's all about pushing yourself. You got it. It's, it's about pushing yourself. Like, like you, I wrapped it just so you know. Uh, it's all about, yeah, so there isn't just a, a exposed boogie. Um, that's my, that was that's my new uh, DJ name. School. That's, exposed my new, boogie. that's my new DJ name. Hilarious. Um, it's not just about, it's, a, it's about pushing yourself a lot like the chamber and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So like, and, and, and you, you don't ever want to be like, oh, I've done enough. You want to, Prove to yourself consistently, oh, I can do that. I can get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. What is it? Why do you why do you think it's not something that you've you've t- taken up? Because growing up, you basically saw two people, m- me and your mom, eat super healthy. Yeah. And I think I probably I, went crazier in the gym when you were a kid than I do now. Yeah, I th- 
I don't know. Maybe that's kind of like what it is. Like, because when I was in the house, like we weren't allowed to have soda in the house. We weren't allowed to have sugar cereal in the house. Uh, we did have a candy drawer at one point in time, but then it just bewittled to black licorice and whatever the hell you guys used to eat. Disgusting. <clears throat> hey, just real quick digression. If you eat black licorice, sin. That goes for you too, my beautiful girlfriend. You like black licorice. I, I, like, tell her, she, I tell her, I was like, yo, you can eat it when I'm not here on the weekends. You can't eat it while I'm in the house. Like that. I like a black ric licorice. That smell drives me crazy. So you don't like a good and plenty? No. Me I don't really like licorice. You don't like a red licorice? I don't really like red vines or licorice or Twizzlers. I like the I like the sour punch straws. Like I like the licorice with like the sour sugar on the. You outside. guys never whipped each other with red vines? Oh, we did, but I never uh, ate them. I I'm a I took my friend's red vines and hit them with them. Yeah, I'm a Twizzler guy over a, over red vine for sure. Yeah, Twizzlers are a little sweeter. Yeah. Um. Anywho, but I think that's what it was. And like once I was out of the house and realized I was able to, because when we were in high school and like I went over to Jake's house or like we did any other thing, like there was soda was always constantly present. So. That's also what we would just drink like out with friends or whenever I was out of the house, I'd pretty much drink that. I think it was more just like, not that I wasn't allowed to have it, yeah. but it's just that, you know, because every also when we went out to dinner, like I'd order a soda because we were not in the house. Yeah. yeah I just, yeah. I, I just saw it as like a treat. Uh, yeah. And okay. I, I, I will say, I also like, I definitely have an addiction with sweet things. I just have a crazy sweet tooth. Probably because I was raised so competitively to trick or treat so heavy when I was growing up by somebody else in this room, um, and those those fucking bags of candies were so heavy. Like those were yeah, but full; they would last until the next Halloween. They did. We had a lot of candy, but but dude, you know, sugar is. I mean, if you watch its effect on the brain, it, I think it's real similar to the effect that a line of cocaine has. So there's no doubt. Quitting sugar is the hardest thing I've ever had to quit. It was a, f it, and it's a constant struggle because you know why? It's delicious. Yeah. I think also where I am now is just because I've been in, I've also been living on my own since I was 19 Yeah, and not even at college, just by myself in LA. Yeah. And I still found myself just like having that freedom to buy whatever I want. And like, there's still always <laughs> like, I still drink water on a daily basis, but, and I'm drinking like coffee now, but that's not water, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I'm mixing up the things that I drink, but in the coffee, there's still creamer. So there's sugar. And then, so I'm, you know, I don't, but I, th I think I'm just, I think I'm in a little too deep at this point. I'm just too like deep in what way? Not, not too deep, but like, I'm in so deep with the sugar, like the love for the sweets that I have. Like, it's not that it's eating at my motivation, but it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I also just enjoy sitting at home. I'm a homebody. I like also when we're out of town, I like coming home and hanging out with my girlfriend for the three days that we're in town. I totally get that. Totally get that. I just would love to see you start to, and, and this doesn't mean, like I said, this is not, you don't have to be me, but like to start to establish three days a week, I'm going to be in the gym doing this. That's why we're on the road with three days a week. Yeah. But you mean by myself? You, it's so, dude, it's so important mentally to get yourself up. And get yourself uh, this th having somebody else, i.e., me, make you do this stuff, isn't the same. I used to I used to thrive better when I was going to meet somebody at the gym. Yeah, but well, you don't, I don't like want to doing meet... it by yourself. I don't mind doing it by myself, but I lack more motivation when I'm by myself. Yeah, like uh, I found when I was in the for me the two best shapes of my life, maybe three. The one time I found the best shape of my life when I was by myself was LSU, because I found just myself by myself all the time because you know I was depressed and I didn't want to go out and I wasn't really making friends so I was going to the gym I remember you said going to gym me on your way there all the time five days a week yeah but also the gym was a mile on the other side of campus yeah so if it was leg day I would run there and then if it wasn't leg day no matter what I would skate there and then I would just I would work out for like two hours by myself that was my max PR of squatting 300 pounds with no spot it's a lot with those skinny little legs man it's a long way down too man it's, it's yeah, that's the, like it's like five and a half feet down to the floor. That's a lot. Those little Bambi legs, those yep. are not. These are the strongest. This is for sure the strongest part of my body. I can still squat a plate like it's nothing. Yeah, I'll never lose that. I hope. But every time I get in the gym, even when I squat, even if I'm done my sets, I always put a it, plate on there just to, just just to make sure. You know, it's part of you not wanting to go back to the gym. Feeling, I know for me when I take breaks, you know what it is for me. Ah, I'm gonna be so weak when I get in there. Yeah, I, th I think that's also definitely part of it. But I, 
even when we work out on the weekends, like I'm not as weak as I think I am. No, you're not. Because I'm still doing things and I'm like, I still have, yeah, I still have strength. Like my muscles still know how to do this. I just also like, I think I'm a little more defeated because I always, like I did that at LSU, right? Before that I was doing CrossFit, right? Where I was going Dude, to a you class. were pretty jacked. I was going to a class. Yeah, I was doing I remember that. two hour classes. Sometimes I was doing back to back classes. Yep. That was also that 18 and 18 year old energy though. Oh I was God. doing fucking bonkers. And then the other time was when I was early twenties, which I still am now, but I actually technically I'm more into late twenties cause I'm past the midway mark. Yeah. My, around like 2021, 20, I was meeting a buddy of mine, Sean Scully at the gym and you know him, he's fucking jacked, but yeah. also he's a, he's a miles teller gym. Yeah, yeah, that was a Miles Teller gym. Yeah. But he's also a gym rat. Like, that's where he finds his solace. Oh, I used to see him in that gym. Yeah, he also, you know what he used to tell me? Huh. He go, he would call me and go, yo, I saw your dad at the gym today. I'm like, yeah, did you go say hi? He goes, nah, he looked really angry, so I stayed away from him. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, he's just really, he looks really amped when he worked out. And I was like, yeah, you want to know what he does? He used to go into the gym and pick yeah. out a random person. And make up something about them that made him angry, or that they had said something about him, or just didn't like their shorts. Yeah, and they would he would fuel his workout. Yeah, he had a couple of people come up and be like, "Hey, man, you good?" Yeah, they were like, "Why are you staring at me?" I'm like, "I'm so sorry, dude. I just picked you to hate today, but I'll stop staring at you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hilarious. But so Sean, and also Sean for me was motivation because dude was fucking jacked. Like he did water polo when he was in high school, and he was yeah. just like. He's an actor, so he used to train to fit certain roles, and so he knew how to take, you know, take off weight and put on weight and all that shit. So he was. He, we went to the gym for like six months together. Here, and it was. I was in really good shape. You were in great shape. Yeah. And then I, I don't know what happened. I think it, I just fell off. I think maybe it was COVID. Yeah, I think it was COVID actually. And so I don't know. I just uh, I feel like every time I hit a groove, for some reason I fall out of it, and it's just. It makes me not want to go to the gym because I know I'm going to put all this work into the just one day have it just go. Yeah, but it doesn't have to. Right, right, right. I understand yeah. that. And I know that, like, I know can that I, consciously, but subconsciously my brain's like, eh, can, why try if you're just going to stop again? Yeah. Can I tell you? So to me, here's what that sounds like. That sounds like somebody who's been, I'm not a psychiatrist. But, but you did graduate with here, it's, a psychology degree. Uh, so. A part, uh, minor, yeah. Minor, somehow. And so here's... What I would say, that sounds like somebody who has conditioned themselves, and I'm going to use this word for lack of a better one, right? Okay. Who has conditioned themselves to think of themselves as a quitter. Right. Right? And that's that's because you've promised yourself, I'm going to do this, started and stopped enough times to where you feel like that. And this is what I'm saying. Might be true. Okay. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm trying to break because that's your inner, that's what you're telling yourself, who you're telling yourself you are. And you don't have to be that person. You're telling yourself a story, change the fucking story mm. because you don't want to be that person who your inner self says, you're going to quit this anyways. That's not, you don't want, that's not what you want. Right. right. So that's why I mean, when you get, you go, I'm going to do this three days. You know, the worst thing you can do. And I used to do this to myself all the time start and stop things because I, I was telling myself what I thought about myself. And so I don't, I, your, your subconscious is like, it's very loud. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would say to you, the reason to be important to go, uh, I'm going to be there three days a week. I'm going to make sure no matter what, I'm going to exercise three days a week. And that doesn't even matter. Like say one day you're like, I'm not going to the gym, but I'm going to pump out a hundred pushups and a hundred setups. And as long as in your brain, on your goal sheet or on whatever, your mental, on your notes or in your, one of the things is I'm going to work out three days a week and you do that every week, you're going to start to just feel better about yourself. Right. And so that's one of the reasons outside of the health stuff, but is to start to turn that stuff around for you to start to tell yourself a different story about who you are. All right. That would be the big thing for me. All right. You know, and yeah. we'll get, we'll get into the other one, one thing at a time, man, for me, like, and I would say this to anybody, you know, I used to train people they were, and they would like stop everything all at once. I'm like, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. If you have four things you want to change, sleep, diet, exercise, whatever, self-talk, mm -hmm. you're you, to try to do all four of those at the same time is daunting and it's never going to happen. And you're setting yourself up to fail. And then you set yourself up to fail and then you call yourself a quitter and you call yourself a liar and all that stuff. 
you do it one at a time in a reasonable way. So you were like, if you were like, the first thing I want to do is I'll get to the sleep and the self-talk and the diet. I want to make sure I work out three days a week. So for six weeks, that's all it is. The other stuff you don't even worry about. Mm -hmm. If you want to not drink soda or no, or get soda, six, three days a week. And you're like, oh, I can fucking do that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add in here. No soda. Not change the whole diet, not stop eating after midnight, but just no soda. And you add that one other thing in. You start to realize that this is all stuff within your mental control. You just, when you're about to do it or not do it, you just have to make a separate choice. I'm just going to have to start hitting the smelling salts to get me to go to the gym. Or, dude, just start with the, honestly, three days a week. Dude, if you did 100 push-ups three days a week, you would get you would start to see a difference. You would start to see a difference. 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, for sure, for sure. But I just, you know, I, I you know, um, your 20s become your 30s, become your 40s. Yep, that's true. That and, is very true. And so your how your body metabolizes things at 26, and if you haven't broken out of whatever these habits are, by the time you're 36, it's harder. And I'll say this. Watching what's happened this week with my oldest brother's back and knowing that you've already had back issues. Yo, dude, he's got ruptured disc. That is no joke. He's immobile, right? I had to get him a bed and, and uh, just do a bite because he couldn't do shit. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I just worry about you that you think, oh, there's all this time. And there is, but it goes pretty quick. Yep. There's all this time for it to go one way or another, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Okay. Well, that was my, sorry, that was my TED Talk. Yep. No, you're good. Yeah, okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to, by the way, I'm, oh, I do want to go see Guardian C3 here pretty soon. You have to go see it. I can't believe you haven't seen it. We saw it opening weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we watched one. Your mom hadn't seen that, so now we have to watch two. Rank them in order of good to, good to, all, also good. They're all good. Yeah, I'd probably go this newest one at the bottom. Oh, yeah? Yeah, nothing beats the first two. Uh, you in order? One, two, three? I honestly might go one, two, three. I have to confer with my girlfriend just to make sure I'm getting my memories right, but I would probably go one, two, three, yeah. I know I go one, two. Yeah, you you, you put three at the bottom, too. Yeah. One, two, three, for sure. Okay. But I, still great. Still a great movie. Had a great time. Cried three separate times. Can, what's Is that the movie you've cried the most in? Three cries? Endgame was three also. Endgame you cried? In Avengers? Endgame? Are you crazy? When Tony Stark died? When he said, I am Iron Man, you cried? No, no. When he's sitting there, like, talking to everybody as he's laying on the floor, like, literally as he's dying. Not he says, I am Iron Man. After he snaps, he yeah. has, like, a second on the floor to where yeah. he... That moment, for sure. The funeral, definitely. Okay. You know, the funeral is the only time where Drax from Guardians, like, you know, who Dave Bautista plays. Yeah. At his funeral at that lake, it's the only time ever that Drax is wearing sleeves. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, out of respect. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not, not sleeves, a shirt. I have to tell you, I've never cried in a Marvel movie. You didn't cry when, when uh, Tom Holland died in Infinity War? Or Black Panther? Tom Holland died? Spider-Man died? In not Endgame, in Infinity War, when Thanos snaps and half of them vanish. And he's, remember, he's with, he's with fucking Robert Downey Jr. And he goes, yeah. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. And then he just disintegrates? You cried? Did you not? No, I didn't cry. Cry? F fake fan. Fake fan. Cry. Fake fan. Let me just say this. First, First of all, all, hold on, let me get one more thing in there. Yeah. Fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> we know he's coming back, dude. Tom Holland's not dying. He did it. Well, no, he is already back in Endgame. That's what I'm saying. It's still not, it's still, you just don't think it's sad to still see him die on screen when we don't know how we're going to get him back? It, dude, first of all, you know he's coming back. But how and Did when? you die when, did you cry when Black Widow died? Yeah, actually you I did. You did? Yeah. I just have a hard, I don't, um, yeah. He didn't come back. We knew she wasn't coming back. Yeah. Yeah. But and Gamora also almost didn't come back either. That Black Widow movie. Didn't see it. What? We talked about this already. You got to see that. I, I saw Ant-Man Quadrophenia. <laughs> Quadrophenia? Quadalupa? Quad... Hmm. Hold on. Let me get it. Uh, when you said Quadalupa, like you were going to say Guadalupe and Chalupa. Yeah, like, that's all right. What happened over there? Ant-Man 
Quadrophenia nope, nope. is a Who album, I think. <laughs> you were going to say Quadrophenic. It's not. It's for Ant- Ant-Man. Quad Zone. Ant- 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 it's going to take him so many tries wait, for this. Wait. Like, It's Quad, right? No. Oh, okay. Quad? No. Oh, I know. It's Cucamonga? No. <laughs> we're, Ant- b- we're back to your Halloween sounds. Ant- <laughs> it's back to Cucucu. Ant-Man, does it start with a Q? Yes. Which Ooh. means the second letter is? You. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Good start. All right. What else? Ant- Ant-Man Cucra. Nope. That wasn't even a Q. Nah. What no. are you? I know. Oh, Ant- Ant-Man Quantum Leap. <laughs> close. Very, that's closer. Definitely close. Ant-Man. Quantum is right. Oh, Quantumania. There you go. Quantumania? Right? Isn't that right? Yeah, Ant-Man Quantumania, yeah. Yeah, I watched that. I, listen, you know what? Here's what lowest, gets it. Lowest rated Marvel movie? I don't know why. It's Eternals. I don't know why. I don't know why. First of all, the fact that it's it got lower ranked than the Thor Love and Thunder, which was a I agree with fucking that. garbage. And I'm going to say something. And you know it's hard for me to bash movies. And I'm not going to bash this movie because it's I still watched it more than once because I'll watch anything on a plane. And, and I like watching Chris Hemsworth and he's super funny and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But why are they going to make, why are they consistently making Thor a buffoon? It just, I, at the end, I'm like, this dude is not a buffoon. He's a guy. Like, I just don't like the buffoonery, but that, Buff- besides I love that na- word though. But buffoonery. listen, Quant, Quant, I almost called him Quant Man. It's not, <laughs> it's not Quant Man, but, but like. This story was no worse than any. It makes me laugh too. Yeah, he was pretty funny. And his daughter was good, Michelle Pfeiffer. Girl I went to high school with is in that movie. Which? Catherine Newton? Which? What, what? She was, I don't know, she was the blonde girl with the suit, with the ponytail the whole movie? She was not blonde. Burnett? Yeah. Burnett, it was like dirty blonde, I think, maybe. No, they might have dyed her hair, so she looked more like Abby, which was the young mm-hmm. girl. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I listen, man. Oh, that was her? She was really good, dude. No, she's... By the way, a really good actress. Like, yeah, she's really talented. She'll never talk to you again. Zero. We tried to get Jacob to invite her to his thirteenth birthday, and he eighth grade graduation party. Damn it! Get it right. Yeah, dude, you had a lot of parties. You're yeah, eighth and, grade. and I and I didn't invite her because I didn't want her to come because her and her mom were vultures. They her were mom, not vultures. Her mom was a vulture. No, and our our mom made her made, both of them followed us around on our Disneyland trip. Your your she was your mom. Her mom was not a vulture. Don't say that. Her mom. Vulture is not the right word. Yeah, her mom was somebody who cared deeply. Was a single mom, cared deeply about her her daughter, and really was just trying to get her daughter friends and into friend groups and and all that stuff. Yeah, it was. Listen, man, it, it, she's a both very lovely people. No, yeah, she but she uh, she definitely held that grudge because I remember mom ran into her. Yeah. And she said, I still think about that time that Jacob didn't invite me to his eighth yeah. grade graduation party. Yeah, yeah you, fu- you fucked that up. I'm living in that head rent free, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Yo. No, not you. I was saying that to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not calling her. I'm okay. Not, I'm calling her, okay. bitch. Okay. I want to clarify that. No. Yeah. I was, I was saying that just as like a, a out, out loud. Yeah, dude. I, Maybe I'll just say I'm living in that head rent free. There you go. And period. There you go. Um, yeah, but that, that, that did sound, no, that did sound. There was no that. reason to go with that, that harsh. Um, let me ask you this. Um, what, and by the way, I do want to say you've been doing such a good job on the road. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing such a good job. I'm excited for Miami. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. Are you excited for the UK tour? Yes. Get to see my boy, Jake. Are you going to start doing, um, are you going to start eventually you're going to want to start doing extended sets? Are you pretty happy with where you are right now? I, I like where I'm at right now. There's, I still think there's some things I could tweak to make things funnier. A hundred percent. Like are. there's always room for work. Um, Dude, you're still such a newbie comic. Yeah. It's only been a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I like being able to work on it at a crowd that every crowd is a home game. It gives me more confidence to like, see what gets better laughs and yeah. then know what can still work in public. Um, so there are just, you know, things I still want to work on. And then when we figure something out, I feel like there's something funny behind my toes. Um, yeah. And only fans. No, totally fans. Oh, yeah, how, here. How, how, totally fans. How about the time I did mushrooms on my broken toes? Like when they were broken, broken. Yeah. That might be, I'm going to have to go back to that. Well, speaking of mushrooms, how do you think the Friday night late show mushroom shows have been going? 
long. <laughs> so I gotta be like, yeah, long, but good. They're they're filled with uh, they're filled with fucking content. I'll tell you that. But yeah, they uh, you know, it's because every time you go up there and you do mushrooms, I don't know why or how you forget every time, but you forget your phone every time you go up there. Yeah. So you have no idea how long you're talking for. Yeah. Last week. Or two two weeks ago, when we were in Royal Oak, Michigan, yeah, you went up there and we're at an hour and a half, and then you went, "All right, I'm going to tell you the bachelor party story." And I was like, "Yo, that's we're going to be at two hours by the time that he's done." Like, can I tell you something? Nuts. Can I tell you? I um, it was kind of crazy. I and I that was on purpose, though. That yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, I, know. Gonna, I didn't want to say it. You said it. I don't know. I wouldn't normally like, but also nobody left. So thir- Thursday night. Thursday night one show, right? So there's no show after, and I'll usually go a little long. Guys, yeah. late shows, I'm going to go a little long because there's no show after, and I like to fuck around. and I'll give you guys what you paid for. Yeah. So Thursday, we went a little long. And uh, I, I won't even talk about the place or the club. Love. Okay. I love the club. Love the club. Love the people. Love everything about it. But the, the, one of the people was like, who was running the club was like, hey, tomorrow night can't have it. Early show can't have that. I'm like, yeah, I got it. It's not like I've, I've done this before, but he must have mentioned it to me 37 times. Cause he mentioned it to me about 37 times too. Like I had never done stand up before and I didn't know that first show is going to be tight. Cause we got a second show for show. I'm like, I got it. I got it. I got it. But he said it so many times in such a way. And I told you that thing about the AC that, that bummed me out a little bit. Yeah. 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 And I was like, this dude is flexing a little on me. So Late show, I did two hours. 2.15. 2.15? Yeah, late show, I did a little long. But not a single soul no, got up was, from that room and left. I, I would tell you, if they had started to, I would have cut it short. Oh, 100%. I know you yeah, would I'm not torturing the audience. No, no, no. And, but 100%. None, if y'all are listening to this or watching this and you were at that show, none of y'all left. And kudos to that, because that was a, it was a great show. It was long. Definitely come to the Friday Mushroom Shows. Friday, and- Yeah, Friday Night Late, Miami. And not I think like it's I, like a nine thirty or it's like a ten p.m. show or something like that. Saturday night late shows is when I give away my guitar. That as well. So Saturday night late, which I believe is a nine thirty on Saturday. It was in Miami. Yeah, something like, like that. I don't know any of the times down there. They posted them. I think it's, I think Friday is eight and ten, and Saturday is seven and nine, seven to nine thirty. Maybe it's eight and ten thirty, something okay. like that. Yeah. But it, it's yeah, it's spaced out. Uh, um, but hopefully we will have knocked the heat out of the fi- out of the playoffs by then. Um, so that everybody's at your shows. Yeah, dude, that would be a real big bummer. So mon- mon- Monday is not only big for the city of Boston, but it is Although big. I think Monday night would be the game seven. That means it would be su- Thursday, Sunday shows. We'd miss them anyways. Thursday, Sunday. And they'd be playing the Nuggets. It'd be in Denver. So it wouldn't be any tickets. But it's people still at the bars and shit. Oh, yeah. but people wouldn't. But I think it'd be Thursday, Sunday show. So we we're only there Thursday Friday, Sunday show Thursday Sunday games oh okay so Friday Friday Saturday show two gate two day space in between the finals games in the finals really yeah no shit yeah I didn't know that they're spacing it out dude they're getting this you know what I mean yeah they gas the awesome for the gas everybody for the playoffs yeah dude a hundred percent I'm gonna tell you right now the Celtics are we're by the way we're gonna about we're about to be the first team to come back from three zero in two separate sports. Also, for the first time in basketball, we were the first to do it in baseball with the yeah, Red Sox in two thousand four. Let's just pump our let's just pump our brakes. No, I'm not. I'm not pumping any brakes. This uh, this uh, comeback is meant to happen. Like I am a full fledged believer that right now that this game seven with all the momentum yeah. leading up to it, this is going to happen, and we are going to make it to the finals. And now, with that being said, nobody whoever makes it to the finals is beating the Nuggets. Well, they've been off for nine days. I think that's going to be huge. Off for nine days and swept the Lakers. I, but I think momentum, I think this first game in Denver is ripe for someone to come in and grab. Uh, although, although, have you done any exercise in Denver? Yeah, it's hard. Can I? I Austin, the, the Celtics are going to be tanked. Can I tell you something? For sure. Yeah, they are going to be tanked. For sure. Or Miami. Either one's going to be tanked. For oh, sure. It's going to be bad for Miami. For sure. If I lived in Denver, I think I would feel like a superhuman in any other state. Oh my God. Like lifting cars and shit. I understand that. Yeah. That altitude definitely is a factor for sure. I always forget until I get in the gym and yeah. some octogenarian is doing laps around me. I'm like, what the fuck? What did you just say? Octogenarian. 80 year old. Octogenarian. Oh, oct. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Octogenarian. I've never heard that before ever. 
An octogenarian? Is that a word? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but why do you assume he knows the word and I don't? Because I just because there's a lot of words that you make up that you don't get name like you don't get letters right. So like can, what? Like you just said for you tried to guess quantum mania for about eighteen minutes. Yeah. And you I said Q and U and then you said Q like you were like well I was spelling it out I was sounding it out no you were yeah no even if you sound out Q and U it's qu that's what I said qu qu you said Q it's different cucumin. Cucumber? No. Cumin? I do like some cumin. <laughs> <laughs> I do like some cumin. Man. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so the Nuggets, I, I think the Nuggets win the finals this year. This, I don't think the Celtics are the heat. Whoever gets there, they're not beating them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You, 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 I don't know. I, I think the nine days off is going to be a problem. Right. But also a healthy Jamal Murray makes this team so different. Yep. Like the yep. healthy Jamal Murray was up there against the electric. The ball. Yeah. This dude is electric. Yeah, dude, and and Joker is the best player in the NBA right now. If he if he's not, he's in that top two or three. Who would be better than him? I MB couldn't do anything for the Celtics. The Bucks couldn't even beat the Heat. I I I don't think Dante Tacumpo also might have been hurt for a little bit. Of Giannis was hurt, so I don't know that I put him above Giannis. I don't know if I put him above a healthy Durant. Yeah, but Tough I'm off. talking current right now, like in this league right now. Well, they're both in this league, Giannis and Durant. Yeah, but Durant. Oh, I guess Durant was healthy at the end. Well, you put him. You put Durant. You look, look what Durant did in the playoffs. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, there's no what doubt. Joker's done in the playoffs. No doubt. No doubt. Everything. I know. No doubt. But I don't know if I can. Yeah, Giannis and Durant. Top of everybody at the top of their game. Durant is a seven footer who can cross you over and, and no, no, score Durant from all that. three levels and get his own shot. He's not yeah. as good of a passer, obviously. Joker looks like a dude who wandered into a YMCA yeah, there's no doubt. in fucking chunkless yeah, dude. and just started throwing dimes to kids. He, like that game winning shot he hit above AD, that three pointer off one foot. Yeah. Dude shot that like. It's, it's, it's there's no doubt that dude looks like he's been in the potato line for a long time. It is the most insane. But like that is peak male performance, and I don't understand how. Let me ask you a question. So that's all offense, but both Giannis and KD can lock you down defensively, and Joker cannot. Yeah, that, J- Joker's only a presence down low, but he doesn't really provide anything else. Not. I mean, he's a great team defense. Rebounder. He's a great offensive rebounder too. Yeah, which is somebody chance for somebody who can't jump. To, he plays below the rim and he's seven foot. And still gets rebounds. Yeah, it's crazy. It's but, so like 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 that first game against the Lakers in the series, 34, 21, and 14. Yeah. It's, 21 rebounds. Yeah. Against Anthony Davis, who dropped 40. Yeah. Ah, that's for me, that's top tier shit. Yeah. Me too. I, but I think he's in the top three. I don't I don't know that I can put him above Giannis or KD. But, but all I can say is look who's left. There's no doubt about that either. That's all I got for you. Um, you got merch. We're picking up your merch on Wednesday. Picking up the merch on Wednesday. Very excited. We're leaving on Thursday. Th- but like Thursday, like, like, so like Wednesday night, technically. No, Thursday at noon. Oh, that said noon? Yep. I thought that said 12 a.m. No, no, 12 p.m. Nice. Um, and so we're going to be down in Miami, everybody. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Hey, listen, um... If you like the podcast, download, rate, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. It would mean a lot to us. Uh, well, and that's wherever you get podcasts, whether it's Spotify or iTunes or, yeah. you know, we're at, 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 I think it's not iTunes, I think it's Apple Podcasts now. Yeah. So wherever you get them, you know, uh, uh, leave a rate, uh, leave a follow. Uh, I don't think it's a subscribe. I think it's just like a follow the podcast yeah. uh, and a comment. It would be super awesome from you guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok and Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Um, do something nice for someone today. Yeah. That's all I got for you. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say this, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. We're having a great time. Um, I, I lobbed an idea to this dude today. Um, after we get this podcast up on its feet and really humming to do a podcast called Fathers and Sons. Where Which we, sounds like fun. We interview other fathers and sons. Mm-hmm. I, I, or we could just interview a father or just a son. I think I think both makes it a little more interesting because then you get both sides of whatever story they're telling. Yeah, and I, I don't. But I just don't know if we'll always be able to get a father and a son. Oh, we will. Holy shit! Okay. Um, 
But uh, yeah, man, we're having a good time out there. We're so grateful for all of you who have been coming out the shows so, and buying every ticket. And buying every single bit of merch. Also, Michigan. Every ticket, every t-shirt. They yeah. We're sorry for you guys if you were the late show Saturday night in Royal Oak. The rest of the weekend was bought out by the other shows. So Yeah. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. So thank you guys again. None of this would be possible without any of you or without you. So thank you for being here and being, you know, giving me a, an open door to uh, do something cool. Listen, man, my absolute honor and privilege to have you out there with me. It has changed the entire game for me. Just in my desire to still be doing it. So it's super cool. Um, and I can't wait to show everybody what we got coming. Just the start, baby. Just the start. All right. We love Stay you guys. Tuned. Love Later. you guys. Later.